I introduce to you now the legendary Indian percussionist and Grammy Award winning Zakir Hussain. audience assembled just to see you oh my god so early in the morning too. i know isn't it unbelievable <laughs> i guess you don't often play that early in the morning no not very much Night oh, time. but actually in india mm -hmm. we have regularly all night concerts so sometimes we get on at about four or five in the morning we and go on till sunrise play till nine o'clock eight thirty nine well that must be quite inspiring really yeah, it is, you but know. it's funny to be woken up at 2 in the morning. All right, it's your turn in one hour. <laughs> well, I thought maybe you'd have just stayed up and listened to everybody else, too. Uh, it swept away by all? Not n By now, we figured out that we should get our beauty sleep. Get up. Uh, and you are beautiful. Oh, you're most kind. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> uh, when did you start to play this? From infancy? Uh, yes. Um, the tradition started when I was two days old. I was brought in from the hospital and my father took me in his hand. He's the drummer who taught me and started singing rhythms in my ear. So that's where it began. But I gave my first concert when I was seven. Yes. Were you good? Uh, Better than me, I would be. They tell me I was cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet. So the tabla is very, they're a very old instrument. Yes, they are old and they, they represent a tradition which is over 2,500 years old. So the repertoire that we play on this instrument has existed for that long and is the way it was then. What is the, what is this? Uh, this is the bass part, of course. No, but what is the material? Is it, what this is it? This is known as Ashtudhat, which is a mixture of seven different metals. And then it's built into this particular shell and pounded out. And then the skin is put on it and I'm able to play it. Swanee River. <laughs> <laughs> Not in India, we don't play Swanee River, we play Ganges River. <laughs> <laughs> can you uh, actually, you can have people pick out tunes uh, on such an actually instrument? Actually, this is something that I've started doing that myself. Normally, we just play the repertoire, but uh, having been to the West and seen how, uh, how drummers play different kind of melodic patterns mm -hmm. on their drums and have so many drums to do it, I just sort of figured out a way to be able to play scales on this instrument. How do you like tune it? I don't tune it. I just... It just is? It's, I just uh, manipulate it with the pressure of the heel of my right. wrist while I attack. So. It sounds, it sounds a bass, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's like a bass, so, you know. A one-man synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> what is this uh, circle there? This black thing is... Uh, Clay, iron dust, and rice water mixed into a paste, and then it's pasted on here and rubbed in until it settles down. Excuse me. And there are many layers of it, mm -hmm. and this is what resonates and makes the sound. 
or else it would be just like a bongo drum, dead sounding. But that, it gives it that tone, that identifiable tone. tabla yeah. tone. And the tabla makers don't want to give out the way they make this. This is very scientifically done. In other words, it's very organic. They just thumb it in. Until they know. And they know exactly how much. They won't tell you how they know exactly how much to make it an even sounding thing. Will it wear out? That Yes, bit. it falls off after many, many shows and then you just replace this part or you replace the whole skin, whichever way. Uh, will this last you your life? Uh, the shell would, but not the skin. The skin lasts of maybe course. one tour and then I have to get a new one. You're on tour now? Yes. Where are you going after this? I am going to San Francisco after this, to the beautiful, heart-leaving place. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, well, will you play something else and then I'll uh, nag you some more and we'll mention your album and okay. other things that you do. Uh, uh, shall I stay here or if shall I get not, out of the way? You can stay Do here. you like to focus completely? Well, you do I'm anyway, I'll bet. I'll focus on you. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Maestro. So you were great last night, were you? It was a lot of fun. We had a great yeah, time. Packed we the had place. a nice packed place and about two and a half hour show, all drums. People know you now really well. I mean, you're very famous now. Uh, I don't know. Well, a bit. We are. Yeah, you are. Okay, Trust I'm very me. famous. Believe all me right. when I tell I you. Accept. You're, yes, you're on the My on the, <laughs> on the world uh, <laughs> music charts. You have you're uh, often in the uh, in the top ten. You have this new album, which is very big, the Rhythm yeah, Experience. It, it, it has done very well. It's gotten up to number six and. Um, it's coming along just fine. Thank Do you, you think that the um, you worked at the Olympics? You did a, the theme for the opening of the Atlanta yeah, Olympics. Yeah, the, the piece which was known as "Call to the Nation," the opening of the Olympics mm -hmm. last year. I had the chance to write so it. Last up. year? Well, oh God, already. Yeah, already the gold medals have become black now, yeah. <laughs> lost color. <laughs> Who got you that job? Uh, well, we won the Grammy for having done a drum album and they wanted to represent the five tribes of man which originally founded the planet uh, with five different sections of drummers from various parts of the world using a hundred drummers each time, so it's 500 drummers. And they wanted somebody who knew about drumming to write it musically, so they called us up because they saw that we won the Grammy. So you look like a good bet. A good bet. And uh, Hollywood is, you know, it's like, okay, this is in these days, so let's get them. So we got it, and, and I wrote it, and uh, it was performed live with 500 drummers and 100 voices. And uh, it was fabulous to be there Big in hit. front of 80,000 people. and All screaming and jumping screaming up and down. Screaming and jumping and shouting. And, and the, the, the funniest thing was they had the whole sound system underneath the benches where people were sitting. So, so it, they were here. It, the sound was coming up at them and it was very incredible. It's great when the uh, sound becomes a physical sensation. Oh yes, it was. It was definitely. It's not just volume either, is it? No, it's just, uh, it wasn't. Because it wasn't loud. It was on, under 100 dB, so that's much, much uh, softer than, a, say, a Metallica sound system. <laughs> but Metall would you ever go and see Metallica? Yes. Sure. I've seen them and uh, I've worked with different people who do. Um, for instance, I've played a lot with Grateful Dead, the yeah. rock band. And Not and exactly the same as Metallica. No, but they're loud. Yeah. Grateful, well, Grateful Dead, Dead gets up to about 120 dB, which is Would you take your loud. dB meter with you? I don't. No, you just have a personal one? Personal, they tell me, we are at 120 dB now. It's like <laughs> flying the Concorde. We're at Mach 1, Mach 2. <laughs> they tell you that when you fly the Concorde? Yeah, the, the meter goes up. <laughs> it's funny. Um, w uh, once a percussionist, always a percussionist. You can play any kind of rhythm. You can play Afro-Cuban. You can play, you've played with Tito Puente. I played with Tito Puente. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. In fact, just down the road in Seattle, we had our last show. 
and uh, Tito, myself, and another great drummer called Billy Cobham. Oh, yeah, so we I all, heard of him. So we played as a trio, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and then we did a tour in Europe and stuff. So. When you first heard those, uh, those rhythms, did they uh, gel with you right away? Yes, because rhythm is universal. Mm -hmm. It's pulse, it's 4-4, four, four, and um, as long as you understand your instrument and you know what they're doing and so therefore are able to fit into uh, their way of looking at rhythms. I, I studied, uh, I was actually at the University of Washington in Seattle in the mm -hmm. ethnomusicology department. When was that? That was in 1970. Right. So I had a chance to study Latin and African and Indonesian and Chinese and everything kind of rhythms and music. So I was able to fit right in. And tabla is a versatile instrument. It can just blend in, no problem. Your father plays this as well, as you he said. He plays this. He do you play together sometimes? Yes, we do. We, we have done tours together. In fact, we played in Vancouver about two years ago. You didn't even call. Concert. Oh well, I was very busy. Next time I'm you will. Sorry. <laughs> Next time you will. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. Thanks very much, Sakir. So will you play something else? Oh yes. Okay. Here we go. It was amazing. Yes, yeah, it was really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Nothing else to say.